Okay, we are at the East Broad Top Railway. Sarah's here. In Orbisonia, Pennsylvania. Uh, yeah, Rockdale. It's, it all says Orbisonia. Uh, there's the railway station over there. The train just left down the track. We're not riding the train today. We're here for the shop tour. So we get to go back into the roundhouse and see the locos. That's what we're here for. So this is there, and there's a trolley ride we'll probably ride later. So that's what we're here for today. Take more vi video and pictures on the tour. And definitely the locos once we get to the roundhouse. Very windy today, too. All right, pick you up later. There's number 12. Oh, yeah. What is that? A 280? It's like a 280. Yep. Bowler plate. Yep. So, number 12 is our oldest surviving locomotive from December of 1911. Built by the Baldwin Locomotive uh, Works in Philadelphia. Uh, this was the third of the new locomotives purchased by Seabird when he was president. And it was the locomotive before this that was actually the game changer. If you want to come down this way, just watch out for all these pieces of uh, jacketing here. The, the technological game changer, weird as it is to think of, is actually this little wheel set underneath the cab. What this is doing is supporting the firebox, which you can see over here, which goes on our locomotives all the way to the back of the cab. And that got the firebox out from between the rear driving wheels, which is where it had been on um, earlier locomotives. They have a sort of keyhole-shaped firebox where the actual grate that you build the fire on is pretty narrow. So this trailing truck design suddenly lets you have a much wider firebox, have more fire, make more steam, pull more cars with, while you're paying the same number of people in the cab. The locomotive before this one that was the first one with the trailing truck uh, was uh, from 1908, and it was slightly smaller. It, it was one set of driving wheels smaller, so it was a two, six, two, two-wheel pony truck, six driving wheels, two-wheel so trailing four, eight, truck. Two, eight, two. Uh, this was the first 282. That's known as the Mikado design because the first 282 locomotives were sold to Japan. And this is the design that the EBT ended up going with uh, throughout. This locomotive was such a success, they went back to Baldwin the next year and asked for something bigger. Baldwin sent number 14. Um, they got a sister to number 14 two years after that. In 1916, they go back to Baldwin and say, what is the biggest thing that is going to fit on our curves and through our tunnel? Baldwin sends the first of three nearly identical big locomotives. These are superheated steam rather than saturated, like smaller locomotives. And uh, on this railroad, locomotives are graded basically by how many empties they can pull back up the hill. Coming down the hill, you know, you've got gravity on your side, it's a great challenge. Back up the hill is the heavy lift. So number 11 here, pardon me, number 12 is good for 15 cars going back up the hill. The next two locomotives are good for 18. The three big locomotives are good for 22. And that's all in a span of five years between 11 and between 1911 and 1916. They add half again as much as So I'm sort of guessing people know how the steam engine works, but I'd be happy to do the one minute the locomotive that we are currently rebuilding. You all just want to sneak over here and promise me there will be no photos. I uh, can't promise that. <laughs> can't come? Do you, need, do you need to take his camera away? I might. 
Okay, here we are. We're leaving the um, East Broadtop Railroad in Orbisonia. I uh, just wanted to add in a quick note that we got a tour over there of the roundhouse, but I wasn't able to do video in the roundhouse, but I did take some pictures in there. So stay on the video till the end and I'll, I'll post those pictures. All right, thanks guys. Checking out of Orbisonia.